Hi everyone, welcome to Handicrafts A to Z channel and in today's video I'm gonna show you how to stitch this Temaria. This is the variation of the swirls that you can find on Temarikaya. The only difference is that it's made on uh, uh, eight triangles instead of the hexagon and the diamonds that it's as, as shown on uh, Temarikaya. So uh, this is the the Tamari for the series, the Funovrus series, and I call it uh, the wind because it's the day of the wind. It will symbolize in my collection the the day of the wind, and it's a kind of the the wind blows around and it's, uh, whirls whirlpools and everything. And just before I start stitching, I just let you know that this type of pattern should not be used for for Mari more than. 23 24 centimeters because it creates longer floats and as you can see I've already tried to fix them it's not the matter of stitching it's just a matter of the that, that the flow uh, the floats are actually spread the spreading and shifting around so if you want to use it use it on a smaller maria like five centimeters in diameter or so but for my project this is actually works great because it, it symbolizes the winds you got very uh, strong gusts and then you got stills and then some kind of irregular pattern for the wind blow uh, for the air movement so let's get started uh, for this uh, type of pattern you don't need to have the exact mari so if you got something uh, that got some misplaces and bulges and valleys on the on the on the path on the mari itself it's not a problem, you can do that. So what we do, we need to make the uh, simple four division. And as I'm, I've already done half of it, as, as I'm wrapping the equator, I'm stitching it at the same time. So I don't have to go around. And once we stitch, it doesn't uh, really show the difference. As I said, it, well, you can't really find the, tell where it's stitched or not. So all these errors and gaps and everything will be covered. Just pull the thread a bit tighter so it doesn't uh, hang loose and doesn't create more floats. So this is the last one. And before I start stitching, I get it to the side. this way because I need to go to the corner of where I'll be stitching at this point I can remove pins they are no longer needed in this project there may be one needed just to start uh, state the point where the thread ends and you add the new one so I need to get the needle out as close to the joint of the markup lines so if it goes right underneath, it would be perfect. And it goes. It also should go in the kind of uh, perpendicular direction. So when I pull it out and I start working, so when it's difficult to pick up the words, but but generally if if I move out from from this corner and I start stitching, the thread will pull out itself. So it has to be from the corner towards the direction of stitching you can see the thread is secured and is even if I pull it there's no gap and this is really important for the first pick for the first row of the stitching I pull up the threads and stitch at the joint of the markup lines so the first row should be as close as possible to the markup you can see this this is what something you should if it's uh, bigger than two millimeters then you have to re redo it And next row is the the actual the begin, beginning of the swirl. 
to since we got got no straight line here we got kind of the swirl that the stitching twists around and forms the the arch here how semi arch we need to make the stitch if we find the the stitch of the previous row insert the needle under the top thread of the previous row at about, at about the distance of two millimeters and pick up as many threads as possible as the, the wrapping allows you the reason this has to be under is that when i pull the the thread will slide anyway doesn't matter how much how, how much you try it will slide it's either you have to grab really deep or way underneath and as close to the left thread and pull the thread and again under the top two millimeters from the left make sure that it doesn't slide again you see the needle is sliding so we have to reconsider the point of entry and so on until we finish the row uh, finish the square uh, the sorry uh, the triangle and as we go one row by row row by row you will see that the the stitch point is actually forming the semicircle as it folds around then two millimeters under under the top thread and as close possible to the left yeah that's why the stitcher doesn't have nails because you get them damaged all the way while stitching and we can see that the floats already creating a problem and again under two you see this is what you should avoid sometimes even do it at the angle because anyway when you pull it the thread will slide off a little bit and so it goes like this around the triangle towards the center and sometimes I grab well and I don't need to go really deep up and into the the, the base but sometimes you do have to get grab a little bit deeper deeper and upper It will take about another five minutes to finish. Actually, I'm really pretty close to finishing this center, close to the center. Yes, the stitches are getting smaller and smaller and they're packing up tightly. And remember the thread you can see the needle jiggling Re relocate the entry point stitching tamari especially when you're stitching with no markup this is really important so again you see still
you will start feeling this after a couple of maris you will start feeling how the, when the needle uh, fits perfectly into the base or when you need to advance it a bit it will come with the experience and you can see it's deep even if it slides up and down it stays firm at the base but still So this is just about to finish this part and I'm not going to stitch the rest of the body and just to show you how it will look like once you finish this because I got three more a different stage of completion. You don't have to follow this uh, one by one sometimes when you follow the the needle you might end up doing this this and then this and maybe this and then coming back and then just it's just that the way you finish the the center and you go to the nearest corner following the the direction of the next stitch let me show you that This is just about it. So just a couple of more minutes to finish just because it's it's a small area and it's less and fast to make. As you can see this uh, the center of the of the swirl is forming. Now it does look like a swirl like a mini tornado. sliding well, actually close to the center it doesn't really that m matter still try to keep everything tidy and one more stitch before I finish before, before I complete this one now the last stitch and if I go in, in this direction, I, I can either go here and start from this corner, or I prefer to go from this corner. And again, as close to the center, uh, to the markup lines as possible. So if, I see, do, if you see it, I'm pulling it out. It creates a little gap that we need to avoid. So I might do a bit of a backstitch so that the, the thread comes out right under the markup line so when you finish this one i actually got the markup line uh, the the pin that left here and if you follow the pattern 
this is the these are the triangles and these are the the half the swirls created it looks a bit like the uh, weaving like some woven parts interlocking but generally this is it so if you find the ugly spot that you want to hide especially if you you'll be using this as the uh, Christmas tree decoration later. I in this Tamari I use the center so it gives us more corners with these lobes. And if you use the center, it will give you give us more swirls than lobes. So it's up to you to decide where to hang the loop. But this is generally it. It's very easy to make. But as I said in the beginning, do not use this pattern on the Mari bigger than five centimeters, five six centimeters in diameter, because this one is seven point five, and you can see the floats are actually hanging and gathering together. So that that would be it for today. Thanks for watching me. Stay tuned. Bye.